Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, today I will read from a book titled The Renewal of Dwelling, European Housing Construction 1945-1975, edited by Elie Mosayevi and Michael Krauss and published by Trieste. In our daily work as architects, we address the question of how contemporary urban living can be conceived and designed. What does housing construction mean in a European context? What are innovative floor plan concepts and why? These questions relate to the observation that today's housing in Europe was predominantly built between 1945 and 1975 as a result of reconstruction following the devastation of World War II and the subsequent boom period in the late 1950s. Thus, most of us live in apartments and homes based on principles and ideals that reflect this historical period. We asked ourselves what architectural renewal did this massive reconstruction and expansion of existing construction experience? How did international debate at the time affect housing construction and which locally specific qualities can be identified? What do these homes look like in various European cities? Last but not least, what can we learn from this development for today? Our initial interest focused on apartment floor plans. We regarded them as the formal aesthetic result of complex and dynamic negotiation processes. As an expression of local housing legislation, economics, construction methods, as well as social and artistic ideals, they paint a detailed picture of the interaction between public interest, political agendas and private space, as well as the potential for appropriation by the housing residents. Inspired by comparative literature studies, we proposed the term comparative floor plan studies for architecture in order to highlight the cross-border transnational approach of our investigation. However, this book is not only a publication on floor plans. Manuals on floor plans are published regularly and form an important reference for design. Yet, they exclude the political conditions in which the designs were conceived, as well as their local contexts. This publication aims to make a contribution in that respect, by addressing both the uniquely characteristic conditions of the project's conception and also their floor plans, enabling a contextually founded assessment of the collection as a whole. The complex historiography of post-war housing construction is unparalleled, starting with political agendas, implementation, design and construction, moving on to allocation and appropriation. That is one reason why only some aspects of this broad field have been investigated so far. Research on post-war architectural history, as well as the architecture and politics of social housing development in the same period, has produced important publications in recent years. They often focus either on the individual architectural works, their materialization and floor plans, or on political processes, protagonists, programs and changes in living standards. Furthermore, due to the complexity of the research field, they largely focus on individual countries. Only a few comparative studies exist owing to the contrast between the national approaches. Another obstacle preventing wider architectural research on housing construction during this period no doubt lies in the housing's poor reputation. More renowned for its large quantity than its high quality, infamous for its monotony, repetition and lack of identity, it appears to offer scant material for architectural historians. In this respect, too, recent research work has experienced a re-evaluation of buildings from this period. In our excursions through Europe, we found no uniformity and instead a high degree of diversity, a willingness to experiment, and locally specific characteristics. We focused on cities that are in the second tier behind major European metropolitan centers such as Berlin, Paris and London, their debates having been overshadowed by international agendas. The studied projects are therefore more pragmatic and contextual, since they did not necessarily have to embody the ideals of an avant-garde movement. A 
our projects are located in Zagreb, Cologne, Oslo, Porto, Lyon, Athens and the English cities of Liverpool, Leeds, Manchester and Sheffield. We suspected and found that in these places the projects resulting high degree of specificity led to a particular wealth of inventiveness. Of the 95 projects initially identified, 54 found their way into the present catalogue. It is a careful compilation of different media aimed at a better grasp and assessment of the buildings. In selecting and compiling the projects, we were guided by the idea of an archive that collects heterogeneous materials. Thus, plans, photographs, journal cuttings and building files are all presented in parallel on an equal standing. All plans were redrawn by the students to ensure better comparability between the projects. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.